guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to give you guys a walkthrough of my teacher bullet journal as well as my general teaching setup. And first things first, I just wanted to say that this year will be my student teaching year, which means that here in France we work a half schedule. So I only have nine hours in front of students and I only have three classes that I will be dealing with all year long. Now, I have never been a full-fledged teacher in the French school system. I have always been an assistant, and so the setups that I was using last year are not going to work for the kinds of things I'm going to be needing to do this year. So I went on YouTube and I got a lot of inspiration from Alexandra Plans, who is a teacher in the US, and she has shared her teacher bullet journal setup on her channel. And I've definitely adapted certain things to my own style, but a lot of the spread ideas kind of came from her just because I wasn't really sure what I would need going in. And so I took inspiration from more experienced teachers. So before I dive into the actual setup, I thought I would go through and show you the supplies that I use to set up this particular bullet journal. As always, I have my handy pencil and eraser, of course. I also have used two different rulers. So I'm using an A4 size dot grid loic term, which means that my standard little triangle ruler is not long enough to do a full page line. So I've been using this ruler, which I normally use to um, cut things. I have a cutting board and a, a, a knife that I use, and I usually use it for that, but he does double in for a longer ruler when I need it. The majority of my spreads are outlined at least in Micron. Um, I have, so I keep them in a Stettler pigment liner box, but these are actually all Microns, and I have used almost all of the sizes on these various spreads. Because of the many, many, many mistakes I made, I thought I would show you my whiteout and correcting tools. So I use a tape runner if I have a lot that I need to cover up. I use Tipex for more like detailed work, and if it's not very dark, a lot of times I'll just use a Signo, like a white Signo gel pen. I wanted to keep the lettering in this pretty minimal, so I've been using these two Pentel Touch sign pens. I just have the standard black and gray. I did, near the end, um, use this Faber-Castell, it's like a copper, yes, it's a copper um, 1.5 point pen. It's got a really nice color. I really only used it, I think, on one or two spreads, so you'll see that at the end. I also used a gray Statler Triplus Fine Liner. And then I have my color coding colors for my different classes. So as I mentioned, I have three classes and I wanted to um, make things as easy for me visually as I could. And so I picked out three different colors and I tried to color code everything in the journal that had to do with those three classes in these colors. So I have teal, kind of a periwinkle blue and purple, and I have both a Papermate Inkjoy gel pen in a 0.5 and a medium uh, Papermate flare, and these are actually from the Candy Pop collection. So these are my color coding colors. Last but not least, I have, and I'm probably gonna open, nope, I did it right, yay. So last but not least, I have my back to school slash teacher washi. So let's see if I can get this up here. So this was a pack of 10, I believe it's 10, two, four, six, yes, 10 plus this blue foil. Um, so it's a pack of 10 washi from Michaels and I don't remember if it was Recollections or a different um, like store brand or something, I'm not exactly sure, but I've been using these washi as well as, this is an MT kind of supplies. It's not only school, there's like sewing supplies on here too, but it's got pens and pencils and rulers and stuff. And then I have, um, these are some other ones that I didn't actually use. So I actually just used these and some of my solid washi in this particular bullet journal because I wanted to decorate a little bit. Finally, as I mentioned before, I have an A4 size dotted like term, and I know I'm not pronouncing that right, but sorry guys, that's the pronunciation I'm going to go with, um, in gray that I am using for my teacher bullet journal. Now this is the master slim, so it is half of the pages um, compared to the normal master, which I believe there are, let's double check, 
Do, do. There are 121 pages in this one. And I will, this is where the majority of my setup is, but I wanted to also mention I have this binder that I will be explaining a little bit later that I'm also using in my teacher setup. So let's dive into, whoops, the actual bullet journal. And I'm filming this at a weird angle because this journal is so big. Um, I had a hard time getting my tripod up high enough so that I could actually get the entire thing in view, but we'll give it a try. So first up, I have my intro page. So this is just my name. I have my school email and the name of the school I'll be working at, which is why I covered that up. And I have my class key. So I have my three classes. I did the color coding in both of the, both of the pens so that I would have it front and center in here. And the first spread that I have that's kind of functional is this teacher dashboard. And this was inspired by Alexandra Plans 100%. Hers is actually a bit different than mine, but I sort of, I tried to simplify it because I wasn't sure what I would need. And because I only had three classes, I thought that this would be pretty functional. So I have a spot for to-do list, spot for copies I need to make, spot for notes, so like contacting people, emails, what have you, anything else that comes up. And then I have a sticky note for each of my classes. Um, and what I envision using this for is, in terms of the class stickies, I think that I'll put um, notes for things that I still need to prepare for them, but any copies that I need to make for these classes will go up here because then I can just take this out and put it on uh, my stack of like uh, copies that I need to make. So what I did is I actually chose to color code these as well. So you'll notice that for my CZM, I have teal for the Sankyam, I have periwinkle, and for the Catherine, I have purple. So I'm really trying to keep the color code as uniform as possible throughout the entire thing. Sometimes I had to approximate but it's not too bad. Um, and then I picked three other colors. Now I did use the uh, super sticky post-it notes because this is in the front cover and I'm gonna be opening and closing this a lot so I wanted them to stick, but I basically dedicated one pad of each color that I'll use and um, alternate out throughout the year. Next, I have this section here that I was thinking I might put important information like past passwords or like websites or what have you because this is that weird like inner flap where it opens but it's not like it doesn't always automatically open so I thought it might be a little bit more protected and I could even close it with a piece of washi to make it even more private but of course I don't actually have anything to put in there yet so it's still blank. Um, I do want to do something here but I'm not sure if it's going to be something functional or if it's going to be decoration. I will figure that out as I go. Next up we have the index, which I have currently only filled out through the end of my monthlies. I have to go back through and fill out the rest of the stuff, but I am going to use the index so that it'll make, make it easier to flip through and find things if I need to. So as with all of my bullet journals, pretty much except for my collection bullet journals, I like to have a year at a glance. And what I did for this one is I put the entire school year. So we, the teachers, go back at the end of August and we have potentially classes or meetings or what have you up through July. So I was actually able to fit the entire school year on this one spread. And in terms of dealing with the 2017-2018 crossover, I chose to just write in the 2000, let's see, so 2017, um, or 2018 next to the actual month. And you might notice that I have actually completely, I completely screwed up my header. There's a lot of whiteout on there, but you know what? That's what happens. But in the end, it actually worked out and I really like how this looks. I think this will be a really useful spread for me to have in here. Next up is my year overview. So the school actually sent out a booklet that has the entire school year calendar so any like important dates any events what have you that they already know about are in this calendar so what i'm going to do is go through i'll write in all of the school holidays i'll write in any of the events and dates on the school calendar that actually pertain to me since i only have three classes um not all of the dates are going to necessarily apply to me but i will fill them out on here i just it's kind of a big project so i haven't done that quite yet and then I jump directly into monthlies, and I'm planning to keep one of my bookmarks on the current month. Um, this 
is in terms of August, like I said, we go back at the end of August, so I really am only going to be using this last week, but I couldn't just draw a calendar with four days, so I just did the whole thing. Um, and as things get, as, um, as it gets closer to the start of the school year, if I have any email correspondence from like my mentor teacher from the school, then I can use this to put in dates and tasks and what have you. But the main monthlies actually start in September. So all of my monthlies have this task section as well as an evaluation and work section. And what I wanna do in this is if I have any um, exams that I need to remember, anything like grading or big projects or what have you, I want to have them up here for the month. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna work out, but I wanted to give myself a space for it. And I also wanted to make sure I left this bottom section clear in case something else came up that I realized I wanted to kind of keep track of every month. So all of them actually have this this like bottom right section empty. Um, I haven't done anything with that yet. And then the rest is just my standard monthly. You'll notice these look a lot like the monthlies I have in my bullet journal. And I did that intentionally, like I've said many times, I don't like to use a ruler if I don't have to. So I love doing this little cross hatch um, monthlies because I can just do them pretty quickly. And I wanted to give myself a fair amount of space so that, for example, things that are in here will definitely get moved onto the dailies, but I'll also mark in what days I have which grade levels, if I have any extra meetings come up. I just find it's really helpful for me to have a more detailed monthly to refer to. So we'll quickly flip through. I did use washi tape on almost all of my spreads. Um, I decided that since I found that really cute teacher washi, I wanted to have a little bit of decoration because I do tend to do a pretty minimal setup otherwise. And you'll notice that sometimes this evaluations and work section is in weird places and I just basically did it to fit with whatever the calendar looked like. Um, so hopefully there'll be enough space, but I just want to make the most use of space. So going through all of my monthlies, lots and lots of them. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of the monthly section. The next thing I have, and this was definitely inspired by Alexandra Plans. I saw this in her teacher bullet journal and knew that I wanted to have something similar in mine. So what I did is I laid out the entire school year in a Calendex style, which if you don't know Calendex, you should definitely check out the article on bulletjournal.com that explains Eddie Hope's system. But I have a Calendex style layout for all of the main school months. So because students don't come back really until September, I didn't even bother to put August on here. And because things tend to wrap up and we have exams at the end of June, I did not put July. So this is going to be where I plan out my the different units that I'm going to do for each of my three classes. So I have one section for each class and I'm going to do a color coded um, for example, if I have unit one or whatever the name of my unit is going to be, I'll pick a color that I'm going to do it in. And then I'll kind of plan out how long I think it's gonna take me so I can kind of see where I need to be in the units depending on when we are in the month. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's something that I have set up the bare bones of this spread, but I obviously can't set up anything else until I kind of find out how curriculum planning goes here and what I'm going to be doing and that kind of stuff. So he's just gonna live here like so until I get more information. This spread, I was going to do something like a year-long assessment overview. Um, this was based on Pretty Prints and Paper. She also has a teacher bullet journal set up, but I don't know that I'm going to need something like that, and so I'm just going to leave this page blank until I figure out if there's something else that I need to put in here in terms of curriculum. So that's why there's a sticky note, but I haven't actually done anything on this page. Next, this is going to be the bulk of the journal is my weekly spread. Now, there are pre-made notebooks for this kind of stuff, but I knew that I wanted to do my own setup, and especially because I'm only working three days a week. The way that it works here, I am in school working three days a week, and then I'm at university classes the other two days. So they can't, at the school, they cannot have me work on the two days that I'm in university because I have to go to university. So. I just put up here the three days that I work. So I work Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then I put in the school schedule. Now, like I said, I only have nine hours of work, so obviously a lot of this is going to be blank, but I wanted to have the entire day up here. One, it was easier to count out um, 
count out the boxes, but also if, for example, another teacher is absent, sometimes what they'll do is they'll shuffle around the other classes. So I actually, when I was substituting, I had students that they'd had, for example, on Wednesday, they'd had two classes canceled, so they would only have my class, and so they asked if they could move that one hour to another day so they didn't have to come in just for one hour. So because I can only work on these three days, I wanted to give myself the whole day so that if a meeting came up or if I had to move the class around, I would have the space to do it. The other thing that I have on here is a full page note section. And this is where, um, for example, I wanna have this open on my desk when I'm teaching. So if anything comes up that I'm like, oh yeah, I need to look up that, I'll look that up, or I need to um, check on this, or I need to make copies or whatever, I can just jot it down really quickly in here. And then after I can go through my notes and put them on the correct to-do lists or what have you. If I have any like lesson ideas for things I want to do in the future, I just want to give my place, myself a space to write down all of those things that I didn't really have another space for. So this is what I'm planning to have my setup look like for the entire school year. However, due to the time it takes to draw out the spreads, it's not that long, but they are, um, I do use a ruler, so they are a little bit time consuming. Um, I've only done, I think I did like five or six spreads so far, and you can tell I haven't even filled in all of these sections yet. Um, so I'm going to work on these a little bit more slowly and fill out the rest of them as I go, sort of. So, I'll, you know, if, if this seems to be working, then I'll sit down, you know, one night while I'm watching TV or something, and I'll just draw, you know, another five spreads and keep going until I'm through. So we actually have 36 weeks in the school year here. So I did count out, let's see, I counted out to 36 weeks so that I would have plenty of room to do all of my weekly spreads um, as the year goes along. And then at the back here, this is where things get a little bit less finished because I'm not entirely sure how things are gonna go. So one thing that I wanna have is a grade book and attendance log. And what I was looking at is with how big the A4 is, I can actually have two 29 uh, line sections going across like this. So I would like to have, for example, if this is for my CZM, I want to have um, the first top 29 lines have all the students' names and have attendance for the year. And then in the bottom have all the students' names again and then grades for the year. However, if I have more than 29 students in any of my classes, that is obviously a problem. So I didn't want to set this up until I got my roster and I could kind of see if that was going to work. So what I actually have here is I have six spreads that are still empty. What I would like to do is use three spreads for attendance and grading, and then have three spreads for other things. So for example, maybe do a communication log with like parents, or if I have to send kids out for disciplinary reasons, or if there's anything else that comes up that I didn't realize I needed, I wanted to have a couple of pages wiggle room. So this section I'm actually going to leave blank until one, I get my rosters, and two, I kind of see how things go. After this section of pages, I have my seating charts. So what I wanted to do is, I wanna have a seating chart for the students, but I also want to be able to track participation points when they're in class. And so one of the teachers I worked with this year had this really cool setup where he basically just drew out like a grid on a piece of paper and then labeled all the kids' names. And then he would just give them tick marks anytime they spoke in class, in English, obviously. So I kind of did an updated version of that where I'm going to use sticky notes. And you'll notice that these are color coded to the actual, as closely as possible at least, they're color coded to the to the class color coding, except for this one because I don't have purple sticky notes of this size, but whatever. And I also labeled the right page of each of them with washi tape. So I've got my three classes with washi tape here. And my plan is each semester, or each time we change seats, I'll write their names on the top here. I'll use this for participation. Then whenever we change seats, I can just take off all the sticky notes, put them in my gradebook so I can um, put down participation points and then put out a whole new set of sticky notes. Um, so if they change their seats or whatever, I can just move these around on the page. Um, so that's kind of how I'm planning to use this spread. I would also like to incorporate something like Class Dojo, but I'm not sure how that's gonna work. If that's gonna work, I have a feeling that might be just one thing too many for me to do my first year teaching, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that is basically the end of my teacher bujo, oh, except for 
I wanted to have, this was another one from Alexandra Plans, I'm tracking my own personal attendance. So it's my personal absence log. So if I'm ever absent, then I can write them in and I did them by month. So I could kind of see like if in say December, I just got really sick or something like that. So I can kind of see how they parse out. Um, so that was just for the last page of this. And then of course I have my, oopsie, I have my measuring lines um, to help me plan out spreads, which this actually came in really handy so I didn't have to keep counting all of the lines every single time I wanted to um, make a new spread. So this is my teacher bullet journal setup, but I wanted to also show you guys this. Now this is my lesson plan binder, and I watch another teacher's videos on YouTube. It's Pocket Full of Primary. Now she's a second grade teacher, but her organizational skills are on point. And I was trying to figure out how I wanted to um, plan out and kind of save my lessons. And she talked about how she uses a lesson planning binder. Now my system is gonna be different from hers because I only teach English and I only have three classes where she's in a second grade class, so she's doing all subjects. Um, but I liked the idea of having a binder to kind of help me organize everything. So what I've got is just the standard black binder. I have my school schedule up here so you can see it's kind of bare because these are the two days I'm in university. And then I still have to label the tabs, but I'm not sure how I want to do that. So they, I need, I want to make sure they kind of hold up. So I don't know if I want to do like a piece of paper, if I want to write directly on it, I'm not sure. So I've just got sticky notes for the moment. So I've got urgent. So this is where I want to put things like those copies I need to make. So I can put any of like the one, you know, if I print it out at home and I've got one copy of each of them, then I can pull my copy sticky notes so I can write down how many copies I need to do and just stick it straight on here so that when I go to the copy room, I just open up to this one and I can make all of my copies. Or if I have papers I need to grade or what have you, I can just kind of have them all in here in this section front and center so I don't forget about them. The next section, oh goodness, is important papers and documents. So this is actually where I'm gonna keep anything I get from the school that I need to hold on to. So for example, this is the booklet of the school calendar. It's like 20 some pages long, it's insane. I've got another thing that's like a letter from the principal, various things like that. The next thing is going to be miscellaneous and this is because I had six tabs and I only had five things I needed to have tabbed. So I'm just going to leave this one kind of as a, I'm not sure what to do with it yet, but I wanna have it in here, tab. Now, the reason that I have it in this setup is because I wanted to continue my color coding. And it had to be approximate this time because you'll notice I do not actually have a purple tab. So basically I just approximated. I said, okay, well this one looks kind of teal, this one's kind of a periwinkle, and this one's kind of gonna be my purple. So this is for each of my separate classes. And this is where I want to put in any of the lesson plans, any, once I make copies, things I need to hand out, grading, things that I've graded that I need to hand back, I want to put in here. And what I'm thinking is, because I don't want this binder to get super thick, is at the end of like a unit, for example, I'll take everything out and store it in another binder at home because I hopefully won't need to refer to it in school anymore, and then start the new unit in here so that I always have the most current things that we're working on in this binder, but that I don't let it get clogged up um, and get too heavy because I'll be carrying a lot of stuff around with me and I would like to not add to that if I don't have to. So that is my setup. Obviously things are not entirely solidified because um, this is going to be my first year teaching, so I'm not entirely sure what to expect. I'm sure I will have to make some changes, hopefully nothing too drastic. Um, and you know, a lot of the changes will potentially come in the years to come, but this is how I basically wanted to get set up so that when the school year starts, I'm not scrambling to try and draw a bunch of, a bunch of spreads or figure out my organizational system. I wanted to have something already in place so that when the school year starts and things get crazy, I have a system ready and set to go. So if you guys have any questions or comments or even other ideas for organizational tips or what have you, I would love to hear them. You guys can leave them down in the comment section below. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and or subscribing to my channel. Now that we're nearing the end of summer, I might go back to just posting one time a week. It depends on my time and my ability to film multiple videos and get them posted during the week. But at least for now, you guys will still keep having two videos per week, at least up through the end of August. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.